everybody this is Andre and welcome back to another video from Med School EU today we are moving on to the next topic of atomic structure in the chemistry and the IMAT specifications and today we're going to talk about elementary particles atomic number mass number isotopes so in general what we're going to discuss is going to be the atomic theory so let's first talk about what is an atom and uh, let's define it first of all an atom is the smallest unit of matter able to undergo chemical reactions and an atom uh, is made up of three major components these are the only three components I should say that the atom is is really made up of and those are going to be electrons protons and neutrons and so here I put out the labels that I'll be using throughout this video and for further videos just to give indications of what are protons, uh, electrons, and neutrons. So if you see me putting these symbols up, then you're going to know what they represent. And the uh, atomic structure is really made up of these just three different types of, uh, of particles. And these things are going to differ in every single element so there are going to be uh, what 118 elements that I've got on my periodic table here and all 118 elements differ in the number of electrons protons and neutrons that they have so and and this is something that is evident based on their atomic number and we're going to discuss the periodic table in the next section but today we are just going to dive into the different types of, uh, of things involved with an atom what they mean and how they make up their chemical properties so first of all let's talk about the structure of it now this yellow core right here that you see on the atom this yellow core is called the nucleus and the nucleus is made up of only protons and neutrons so what this means is that the entire mass of the atom is is made up of protons and neutrons so the nucleus covers the entire mass it's extremely dense covers the, these positive particles and neutral particles and they're going to be in a combination inside the nucleus holding its mass because the electrons they have obviously mass but it is so tiny it is so small compared to the protons and the neutrons we consider it to be negligible so we don't consider it to contribute towards the mass of the atom the only contributions that are made are by protons and neutrons and they are made in approximately a similar fashion meaning that protons um, make a certain contribute each protons weighs a certain amount and the, each neutron weighs a certain amount and the the weight of each is extremely similar and they all reside inside the nucleus so generally speaking the nucleus is going to be positively charged right because neutrons are neutral they don't counteract the positive charge of the protons so here inside the nucleus we are going to have positive charges and we're going to have our neutrons and so therefore it is going to be positively charged overall now the electrons are going to be flying around the nucleus and this is not actually how it's how it's made but uh, this is the atomic theory this is how we think of uh, of it how it is made and this is how we perceive it in order to understand how their properties really work so electrons are typically going to circle around the positively charged nucleus because electrons are going to be negatively charged and so uh, their their task is to really just float around and, and jump around the nucleus they're they're not going to go inside the nucleus uh, they are sometimes going to leave the atom altogether this is what's called reactions but other than that the core electrons are simply going to circle around the positively charged nucleus because positive charges and negative charges attract so based on the number of electrons and based on the number of protons and neutrons it is going to determine its chemical and physical properties of each element 
So every single element that's there, there's nothing crazy or nothing new or different about them. They just have a different number of electrons and protons and neutrons involved in them and nothing else, which gives them these, these crazy different properties. I mean, something like chlorine gas is completely different from oxygen gas or from hydrogen gas or from uh, sodium chloride, which is a compound, right? These things are completely different from each other just simply because they have these micro, micro, micro particles that are, differ in their number. Now, the, the electrons are going to go around in their shells. So these are called shells. Now, the most outer shell is called the valence shell. And the most outer electron is called the valence electron. Now, why is this important? Well, because valence shells and valence electrons are going to determine the reactivity of, of the atom or, or of the element. So if uh, typically, let's say, the, the first uh, period of the, uh, of the elements like hydrogen, lithium, sodium, they are going to have just one uh, valence electron and therefore they're going to form certain properties versus the halogens which are on the other side of the periodic table of fluorine, chlorine, bromine, then they're going to have seven valence electrons and, and I'm going to show you how those are going to be counted. However, those are going to determine their uh, general properties and uh, electronegativity, so the ability to gain electrons, ability to form bonds, all of these things will be attributed by the number of valence electrons. And you will see this being more evident when we talk about bonds. But generally speaking, you should also understand that a bond is basically uh, an interchange or a sharing or a complete transfer of electrons from one atom or one element to another element or between several elements that form a compound. That is a chemical reaction after all. It's basically making or breaking bonds. Now here what I wanted to discuss is the way that um, the periodic table of elements is structured and basically what information does it really give you because that's something that you're going to be using in doing some of the basic problems involved on the IMAT exam. So let's take for example uh, an element of oxygen. It's going to have its uh, symbol right in the middle it's going to have its name right underneath that oxygen and it's going to have its molecular mass or its atomic mass right underneath here 15.9994 now this uh, they, they would also have a number right at the at the top corner typically on the left side and oxygen will always have an eight so let's talk about what these numbers really represent here so the eight here represents atomic number and the way that the periodic table of elements is structured is based on the atomic number of every element. Well, what does the atomic number really mean? What does it give us? Well, it gives us the number of electrons and it gives us the number of protons that this element has. So now I know oxygen has eight electrons and eight protons. The protons will reside in its nucleus and eight electrons will be circling around it. Now, how do I know the number of neutrons? Well, that is something that we're going to have to look at the number here at the bottom. So the number here at the bottom indicates atomic mass. And as I've mentioned that the entire mass of the atom is basically composed of neutrons and your protons. So if I do know the number of protons, and I know that they're, they're very equal, right, between the protons and the neutron and neutrons, how much they contribute, if I know that they're fairly equal, I can take this atomic mass and I can basically su subtract from the atomic mass the number of protons to get the number of neutrons. So if atomic mass, I label it as, as uh, AM, I'm going to sub subtract the number of protons that will give me number of neutrons. So for this element, particularly for oxygen, we are going to have 15.9994. That is basically 16 minus 8, because 8 uh, uh, protons from the atomic number, that will give me 8 neutrons. And this is how you are going to find the number of neutrons every single time something or some sort of question like this pops up on the test. I'm not going to go through examples. There's plenty of examples from past tests 
uh, they will have plenty of different twists, different types of formulas, kind of weird sort of angles uh, approaching this sort of question. But here, you are given all the knowledge you need in order to solve the question that is given to you on the IMATS. Now we're going to discuss something called an isotope. And an isotope has the same atomic number. So this means the same number of electrons and protons, but it's going to have a different mass or a different number of neutrons. So typically when what we see on our periodic table and the masses that we see on there is basically a calculation of the average atomic mass based on the percentage of the isotopes that exists in nature. So for example, it, when we're talking about some sort of element, it would have, you know, 80% of the element exists with an atomic mass of 16 grams per mole, or maybe um, some sort of uh, element exists with 7% of this other mass. And then you combine all these masses, you attribute uh, their contribution based on the percentage that they exist in nature and then you find the average atomic mass and that's we're gonna go through an example that involves that so element X has uh, four isotopes first isotope exists in 0.56 percent in nature that has 83 AMU or 83 point uh, 9 AMU, that's um, mass unit. Second isotope uh, exists 9.86% in nature, so the concentration of it compared to the other isotopes is 9.86% of uh, 85.9 AMU. Now, how do we find the average? Well, basically, what we're going to do is have to turn the percentages into... Uh, decimal places and then we're going to be multiplying it by mass and then adding everything together so here's going to be the equation and th these are some of the questions that will come up they will obviously give you smaller numbers because you can't use calculator on the IMAT but uh, this is the general gist of how you're going to find the average atomic mass of an ice uh, with all its isotopes and so our answer is going to be 87 point six one AMU and this is something that will be written in the periodic table and that is going to resemble the average mass of uh, considering with all the isotopes involved so this concludes our lecture for today in the next video we are going to discuss electronic configuration and the electronic structure of atoms of different elements